If you've ever been in an important meeting and you think, wow, I forget everything, I don't know what to work on next, then in this video I'm gonna teach you how to actually do notes in a way that it's very, very easy to remember and then also memorize them if you would like to do that as well. So, let's get to it. A lot of the time when we're in meetings, we're trying to show face. We're trying to be professional, we're trying to be engaged and focused and polite and all these certain things. But a lot of the time, we're not actually just listening to the information that is coming at us. So the first step that we wanna do is clear our entire mind of what we're trying to think about, who we're trying to impress, who we're trying to be. What we wanna do is listen to the person who's actually speaking by clearing out our mind. So that might mean as you enter the meeting room, you set the intention to think, what has this person got to say? What has this person got to say? What has this person got to say? Because as we do that, we're clearing our minds by what we've got to do later, how our mind is preoccupied with an argument we might've had before, what we're gonna have for lunch, you get the point. So when we put our focus on what does that person have to say, then our brain starts to find that information. Just like if I told you right now to look for the color green, your brain's gonna find it really quickly. <laughs> so when we tell our brain what information to look for, it will start to find it. So step number one is look for the information you want to remember. Step number two, instead of trying to memorize and remember the entire presentation or the meeting and everything at once, we want to distill the information down in the core key concepts, key facts or key words. So let's say there's an entire discussion about creating an online course. This might be a five to 10 to 15 minute discussion about back and forth, about what we've got to actually get done, all this sort of stuff. But what is actually happening, and there's only a couple of little pieces of information within that, that might be action steps, or they might be things to do next, or just key points about what you're speaking about. So if we're talking about an online course, for example, there's content, and then there's marketing. It's kind of about it. Let's say that you have to get a profile from somebody. Instead of writing down, I need to get a profile from this person later, that would take a long time to write down. Instead, you can just write down profile or profile Josh, because that distills the information into really small and quick little things that we can just write down real quick. So we don't need to spend a lot of time focused on writing. We can focus on what they are speaking about. Now, next we want to ask them questions and summarize what they have said. Because when we ask questions, the brain gets curious. When the brain is curious, the brain pays attention and focuses. So making sure to ask questions about what they're speaking about. Then summarize what they have said. Don't wait till the end of the meeting to summarize. Summarize as they are going through. You can say, okay, so from this, you said to, to grab a profile and create an online course. Is that right? As you summarize the content, you're also reaffirming to your own brain that you have understood and you have all the content there. Now, if you wanna remember it for long term, then we're going to go to a next step. And this is to create something called a memory palace. If you've been on my profile for a while, you know that memory palaces are kick ass. It's very, very simple. You just wanna take five large pieces of furniture, large spaces within a room that you were in and label them one, two, three, four, and five. You wanna do a round in the circle. We don't wanna be crossing paths like that so your brain gets confused when you're going through the content. So maybe in the office that you're in or the room that you're in having the meeting, there might be five pieces of furniture that you can save in your mind. Maybe it's going to be a painting on the wall, maybe it's going to be a whiteboard, maybe a large piece of glass, maybe the window, maybe it's going to be the meeting table itself, maybe the chairs, maybe the floor, whatever it's gonna be, large pieces of furniture or large spaces. Then let's say that the first piece of information you want to memorize is going to be a profile because you need to send a profile later. Well then what does a profile look like in your mind? For me, a profile is like a, a Facebook profile and I can see Facebook in the profile on the window over here. And maybe I'm on the window scrolling down the person's profile so that I can see more of it. It's getting a little bit more of the, the action, my senses involved into that picture. So in position number two, we want to remember the online course. So I can imagine myself typing out an online course. Maybe I step inside of the iPad and I'm teaching people in front of a classroom inside of the iPad, okay? So we wanna get immersed in this image itself. Let's say that I have to call somebody called Mark after the meeting is done. So I can imagine here on the table that there's a phone and I pick it up and on the phone, there's a big mark across the phone. So that is going to cue me to remember that information when I think about it later. Just like anything, these pictures, this memory palace is a skill. The more that you use it, the better that you get at it, right? The first time that I got on stage and performed and sang, I was so bad. Even my dad came up and said, Josh, I can't believe that you did that. That was terrible. 
But after time and after actually doing this more frequently, it was very effortless for me to hop off on stage and people coming up to me and saying, wow, man, that was really, really great. Thank you so much for your performance. So when was the first time that you tried anything once and were amazing at it for life? The answer is probably never. <laughs> Sometimes you need to crawl before you can actually sprint or run, right? So with these memory techniques, give them a little bit of time, be a little bit patient with them and start to, to develop your own associations, your own way of thinking with these pictures. See, I've got different associations that you're going to have with these positions. I'm going to have different pictures in my head because I've had a different life than you've had. But as you start creating them, it's going to get faster and faster. Maybe you won't even need to write down these key concepts and key points in the beginning because your brain will be so quick at creating these points and pictures that you'll be doing it on the fly as people are actually speaking. So give your brain time to adapt and start thinking in a new and different way. And that's all I got for you today. So if you like this, please make sure to like and subscribe. Put some comments down below for me to get back to you with. And if there's anything you wanna see in this channel, please let me know. And until next time, I'll see you next time. <laughs>